This is DC Channel Guns. Like and subscribe. Thank you for watching. What up? It's DC Channel Guns coming at you another gun video. Appreciate you watching. Like, share, and subscribe. Now, uh, coming to you with some more news. Some more news and stuff when it comes to your gun rights. Uh, when it comes to the Second Amendment. When it comes to the Constitution. Coming to you with some more news. Now, if y'all didn't know, um, I was looking at uh, the main man channel um, early on today. And, you know, he was talking about Tennessee, you know, red flag laws and stuff and some bills that have, they have proposed. And so, you know, I'm passing on the information and stuff that he pretty much, you know, gave to me and stuff. And I'm going to add a little bit more to it. Now, uh, when it comes to Tennessee, now... We're going to uh, check out some states and stuff that, you know, pretty much are, you know, seem like to be lining up, you know. And so we're going to look at this. We're going to, you know, look at this little map. Now, when you look at Washington, you see Nevada, California, Colorado, Illinois, Indiana, Florida, New York, Vermont, and Connecticut. Now, you see all these states and you see how they're on one side of the country, on the other side of the country, in the middle. You see how they're lining up. And, you know, it's a possibility that Tennessee can have a red flag law. And there's a lot of states out here that has these laws pretty much in bills ready for it to be passed. And like I told you before, red flag laws is probably the number one gun confiscation that we have right now. That's already taking citizens guns, you know, red flag laws. And, you know, there's so much debate when it comes to red flag laws but I must point out that it seems to me that presenting gun bills now and, you know, the gun laws and stuff must be the easiest money maker um, for the politicians. Because, you know, it must be very easy to sit back, you know, wait for, you know, something to happen and then just come up with the, you know, gun laws. I'm talking about that's pretty much what they're doing. Every gun bill that I have seen has something about, you know, because this happened, that happened in this state, this happened in this state. We're trying to, you know, make, you know, people safe. I'm talking about this is the rhetoric that they keep using over and over. I'm like, you have some of these people that's making an argument that, you know, we should let, you know, the people decide, you know, to take somebody's guns or let the judge decide, let the police decide, you know, let the family member decide. These are the things that they're doing. You know, they're putting everybody in charge for to take your guns besides you, you the gun owner. They're not putting you in charge. They're putting everybody else. Look at the way this stuff is setting up. They're putting everybody in charge of your gun rights. Everybody besides you. They're putting, the, you know, the governments, they're in charge. The, the politicians, they're in charge. The citizens, your family member, the police. I'm talking about everybody, the doctors. Everybody's in charge besides the gun owner. This is the way this stuff is setting up. And, you know, the debate for all these red flag laws is because... Hey, you know, uh, we just want to take your guns. I'm to my, you, you a threat. You, you, I'm to my, whether you was angry or mad or you didn't threaten nobody with the weapon or whatever the case may be. We need to put these laws in place because if we see somebody that's angry, we're going to take their guns. We see somebody who's drunk and, you know, not talking right, you know, we need to take their guns. Now, I know it might sound far straight for what I'm saying, but this is what it's setting up to be. They're not going to just stop if someone who's, you know, saying something that, you know, they deem a threat to themselves or other. They're just going to keep adding on to these bills and add more rhetoric and talking to it to make it so easy for your guns to get taken away from you. Now, some of you don't think that, you know, they think it's, a, you know, I know a lot of people think it's due process out there when it comes to the red flag laws. But, you know, I hate to say it. I don't went on articles up here where, you know, there is no due process. Because, you know, like I said before, in some cases, if they are due process, it's, it's very small. I'm talking about it's very small cases. But the majority of cases is, I'm talking about, you know, if someone deem a threat or, you know, the family fear that they got weapons and stuff and, you know, they, you know, emotionally disturbed and stuff. And a lot of times, a lot of the red flag laws has been used on senior citizens. There's a lot of elderly who's been subject to the red flag laws and, you know, the family, you know, you know, get a court order and stuff like that. And they go in and take, you know, the senior citizen gun, you know, all the seniors trying to do is protect themselves, you know, cause as in this country, senior citizen 
is it attack for all kinds of scams you know people trying to take their money breaking their house you know do all kinds of stuff when it comes to seniors and stuff in this country and they've been the number one subject for the red flag laws so you know you have to look at this thing with your eyes wide open and you know a lot of people think that you know you, it has to be so many you know channels and stuff before they, they actually take your guns but I, I hate to tell you it is not so you know now when it comes to tennessee um they got you know several bills and stuff out there that we're going to go over and you know they got one bill which is sb 1807 now um, SB 1807. Now you're gonna see. Um, I'm gonna put up here. Let you scroll. This, this is how big this bill is. I'm talking about. This is how long this bill is. I'm talking about. You know, how many people are gonna sit down and read all this stuff they got in this bill? See, they make these bills real long. They, they just stretch them out because they know people are not gonna read them. You know, I'm talking about. This thing is probably what about 10 pages long. People are not gonna sit and read these bills. And I think in Tennessee, you know, there's a possibility that, that it could pass. I'm talking about, you know, far as I read, the information I read or whatever, correct me if I'm wrong, but they're supposed to have some, the Republicans are supposed to be the supermajority, you know, over this bill and stuff. So, you know, there are some people believe that, you know, they could pass it. So now I don't know how true that is, but that's some of the information that I looked at. So I'm talking about now, you know, it's one thing that we're going against the Democrats and stuff. It's passing all these bills. It's another thing where you have Republicans are passing these bills. Look at Florida. So, you know, all these politicians are on the table when it comes to our Second Amendment rights and fighting against the Constitution. All of them is on the table. And so, you know, this is what we have going on. Now, they have another bill, which is um, House Bill 1873. Now, it, it was introduced, I think it was last week or so. And, you know, they just keep popping up bills. And, you know... We're going to, um, I'm going I'm to I'm stroll that bill so you can see that bill. And, you know, it's probably, it's like 10, page, like 10 pages long. It's long. I'm talking about, they make these bills real long and complicated, you know, and complicated. So you can't even, you know, most people are not going to sit and read this stuff. That's how we have a lot of these laws. They make them complicated. They put a lot of the words at the bottom and, and mix it all in and stuff. So, you know, this is what they're doing. And all the laws is, is, is for safety and stuff like that. It, it, they're always trying to, trying to keep you safe. But, you know, this, this, this is what we got going on. And, you know, the, the list when it comes to states, you know, adding to the red flag laws, it just keep adding. I told you it just keep adding up. It just keep adding up. More states and more states. It's spreading like wildfire now. And, you know, we're going to have to get out and vote, people. We're going to have to get out and vote. Now, as far as I know, you have Senator Sarah Kiley, I guess a Democrat, and Representative Gloria Johnson from Knoxville. So, you know, you got Sarah and Kyle. I think they have proposed this legislation, um, you know, for to create this um, red flag law bill, SB 1807. So I think they're the one pushing this and stuff. Now, you know, when it comes to red flag law, just like all the other red flag laws, but you have some states that are changing the wordage and stuff in it. Now, what this would do would allow the courts to issue an emergency protection order upon finding that a person poses an imminent risk of harm to a person other allowed to purchase a or I mean purchase or possess a firearm authorized by a family member, household member, inmate partner, or law enforcement officer to petition such order to have your guns taken away from you. So, like I said before, they're putting everybody in charge. Except for the gun owner, everybody. And, you know, you have, you know, I was looking at one article. I think it was in Knoxville. It was a sheriff said that, you know, he's not, you know, he, you know, don't agree to the, the law and everything that, you know, he was just saying that, you know, to take somebody weapons and stuff just because they upset or they're angry or whatever the case may be. He said it's wrong. And I, and I truly believe it's wrong. I'm talking about because somebody is upset and they have phones don't mean that they're an imminent threat or danger. And, you know, I was looking at a video where there was, you know, the, the opposition using alcohol and all this kind of stuff. Uh, you know, I'm talking about, you know, this is what they do. They play this fear tactic game and it's been working. The fear tactic game has been working. So they sit back, they lay in the cut. This is what the Democrats do. This is what the opposition do. They sit back and they lay in the cut. And when something happened, a major event happened, and once the news media that, that you know, the anti-media, once they cover it, 
and you know break it down and everything put fear in a lot of the citizens and everything that's when a lot of these laws really start sky, skyrocketing and then you know when it comes to lawmakers they got to do something real quick they got to do something fast in a hurry we don't think about it then they just going past stuff so you know this is what they this is what they're doing so just want to let you know about tennessee you know tennessee has been a a, a awesome great gun friendly state but there's a lot of states that was that's gun friendly and a lot of these laws are creeping up in there, even in my state of North Carolina. Very good, friendly state. But we have people just trying to creep these bills and laws up. And it's our job to get out and vote. Your vote count, people. Your vote count. Don't let people suppress you. Don't let, you know, the naysayers say your vote don't count. Don't let people persuade you from not going to the polls. Your vote count. So just want to spread that little taste of information. And this is DC Channel Guns, and I'll catch you on the next one. This is DC Channel Guns, like and subscribe. Thank you for watching.